Hello, everyone. Today, a very unusual live. Normally, we do lives on, on uh, Wednesdays at 8 o'clock. But today, I've got a very special guest. And uh, some of you who says, oh, can you do lives in English? Uh, then you probably be uh, happy to see that this one is in English. It's my first one. I think I think it is the first one. I don't think so. I've done them in English. I did some presentation in English, but not live. So if you can give any likes and hearts and uh, share this content, uh, that would be very, very much appreciated. So today I've got with me a very special guest, uh, my mentor and my friend, I think I can say, and who, who will share with you some tips on adding value to um, investment properties. So Gary, I can welcome you on my stage here, the vi uh, virtual stage. Um, uh, life in English and please can you introduce yourself so just tell us who you are uh, and uh, what you do yeah well I uh, you know I, I my name is Gary Sini some of you may know me um, I have done talks at various events and uh, I was I've been a, a mentor for Legacy Asset Academy for getting on for seven years now so I've helped a lot of people I really enjoy property. Uh, property gave me freedom after 30 years in retail. And uh, some people know me as the Hamleys man because after being an area manager in retail for years and years and years, I became the general manager of Hamleys, the famous, fam probably the most famous toy store in the world in Regent Street in London. So, so there right. we are. Uh, and it is great, uh, Gary, to have you here. I know you've got a very busy schedule, so thank you for, uh, you know, just taking time and um, and being here with us. And uh, if we can just help people on, like you said, on the property journey, that's what we can um, do here. That's what we are about to do here. So I know you've got a presentation here, uh, yes. but if anyone can just say hi, hello, uh, you know, in Polish or in English. And if you um, if you want to ask a question in Polish, just write them in Polish and I will try my best to translate it to Gary. Because Gary said, uh, well, I've told him this would be in Polish, but he didn't manage to learn in, um, Polish in a few <laughs> days. So. Well, I had to learn English, uh, um, but Gary said, no, we're doing it in English, so I have to, <laughs> I have to adjust. Uh, but if you have a question, but you don't know how to ask it in, in English, then don't, no, don't, don't worry, we, will, uh, we, we can do that in Polish. Uh, I should have at least learned to say hello, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, I think you should, Gary. Uh, but, but we are here to talk about uh, um, adding value to the properties, and I know you've got presentation for us to do that and uh, to help us to um, to uh, add values to our investment properties because we, that's what we will be talking about, is it? So um, we got some uh, people watching on uh, YouTube, which is great. Hello, uh, if you don't um, haven't subscribed my uh, channel, so uh, then please click the button subscribe i don't do that in english i don't know how to do this you know i've got it all uh, in polish just subscribe here just click uh, and then um, a ring a bell and stuff like that but in english is different um and we've got some people watching on our groups if you are watching from the group you have to click on the link so it shows us your name uh, and then uh, yeah if you can just say hello and um, and ask your questions so uh, at the end we will be answering questions you've got Hagari here and listen uh, people are paying a lot of money for this mentorship i can tell you this now so you've got gary here and you can ask him questions and he's such a nice guy he is not going to say no so he will answer and say anything you you know you need to know about adding values to the property and um about starting up in properties because that's what you do a lot is it with people that are starting up with people yeah, that want to become uh, financially free so this is what we will be uh, saying today about the challenges as well about no money for starting up and all of this uh, I i'm sure we can stay here with gary till midnight to talk about it so gary, <laughs> do you want me to um open your presentation yes, and please, yeah, you, I, think um, I think you'll have to change you'll have to turn the pages won't you Yes, I. Oh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, just tell me when uh, that's needed, um, and um, yeah, just tell our. Um, so, just say a bit about the topic we will be. Um, we will be um, okay. saying today, and I okay. will so, do that. So, adding value to property, um, you know, um, property prices. We've all heard it. We've seen it in the newspapers and on the TV. Property prices are, are going up all over the country. Um, and the three key areas um, that have been the cheapest properties for many years in the UK, which is um, the northwest, uh, the northeast, 
and South Wales. Um, property prices just keep, they've started to go up there. They've been very, very slow. I think it's fair to say Coventry and the Midlands uh, lagged behind uh, London, but then people realised they could get to get to Birmingham and Coventry quite quickly from London. So their prices have started to go up as well. And of course, what some of you probably already know, Coventry is city of culture. Yay! <laughs> Uh, Gary, we didn't say bring them all to Coventry, did we? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a great city now. It really is. Okay. So, um, adding value. As prices go up, how can we get the – how can we get – when we buy properties that are run down, we buy properties that are smelly, that have got 40, 30, 40, 50-year-old kitchens, 40, 50-year-old bathrooms, um, They've got woodworm, they've got rising damp, they've got dry rot, wet rot, um, and the, the, the wallpaper's hanging off the walls um, in extreme cases. Sometimes they're just very old. They're, they're in perfect condition, but you wouldn't want to live there because it's, it's, it's decor is like your nan had. But if we just decorate and put a new kitchen and new bathroom, that's great. But what else can we do? How else can we add value? So... Um, because if we can if we can raise the value of the property, then when we remortgage or refinance, we're going to get a little bit more money out of the deal, or at least not leave so much money in the deal. So that's why that's why adding value is so important, and it's probably more important than ever right now as we talk. So yep. So this is me, and um, I, I get a fantastic work life balance now. Um, Yes, I wanted to be a rock star. Uh, I wanted to, I had long hair and play guitar. <laughs> but, you know, it's what property investing has given me is real work-life balance. And uh, that's me shopping with that great big book. That's me and my wife. That's me and my wife. Well, it's only me in the picture, but that's, um, that's in a wonderful place called Simmons Yacht uh, on the edge of Wales. Oh, and, um, and, and that's me at, at a charity function there. Um, dressed all smart with the pictures. It's not my living room. It's the charity function in a posh hotel. So, yeah, get a really nice work-life balance. Next slide, please. So, you know, um, one of one of my mentors is a guy called Mark Dalton, and he said, he says you make money when you buy. And you do. You want to buy a property where you can add value. Sometimes when I'm teaching people, and mentoring people, they they really, especially if they're quite wealthy and quite used to high prices in in the southeast, they come to the Midlands, or they come to the north, and they think they're getting a real bargain. But if it's if it's already all done, how how can you add value? You, there's not much you can do if it's already all done. So we do make money when we buy. We want to buy properties that we're going to get a good deal on. Um, and the way to do that is for us to buy properties that uh, that need work to be done on them. So the next slide, please. Um, in the old days, back in the day, we were all looking for 25 to 30 percent below market value. That was the buzz. That was the buzzword below market value. And you can see from the cartoons I've put there, <laughs> people are finding it very difficult now. You would be very, very lucky to find 25, 30% off the price today. However, the market is slipping a little bit. You know, the stamp duty holiday is finished now. And uh, I believe the, the, the sales of property are slowing. So who knows what's going to happen in the next to six, six to 12 months. But we still want to get the best deal we possibly can. Next slide, please. So what can we do to add value? Um, oh, do you okay, that one? okay. Yep. so this was this was my first success. I don't know whether you can see the plan very well there. Oh, no. But, uh, so my first success was extending the kitchen. If you look at the, the top of the picture, that's the kitchen window, and then there's a side door. Then the little square there is a pantry, and then beyond that is the stairs. So how, without spending an awful lot of money, 
extending the kitchen, building an extension on the in a lot of 1930s houses. The challenge is is very small kitchens. How people manage with big families with such tiny kitchens years ago, I don't know. But hey, so this is what we did. Uh, it should be on the next slide. No, mm, no, that's it. That's the one. So we took we took the pantry away. And we took a door away on the left that led into the back room. And we actually extended the kitchen up into the hall. So by removing the pantry and by extending the kitchen into the hall and having a through lounge with a door just, just there, it meant we got a much, we, we almost doubled the size of the kitchen. And that was, that was the first way of adding success. Um, adding uh, value to a property that, um, and it's, you know what? You feel really pleased when you do it. You, f you know, being able to see through um, a very old kitchen of sorts and being able to come up with the idea. Um, and it made a wonderful, wonderful home. It's been a buy to let now for, oh, what's it? 10 years, 10 years, that one. So, uh, so the next slide, please. So this was my second success. And this is the one that I really love telling people. Uh, and I call it in through the airing cupboard. So one of the things that I'm always looking to see is I'm looking to see if I can add another bedroom. If a property has um, two bedrooms, it has a certain value and a certain desirability. If you're a couple and you've got one child, OK, a two bedroom house is OK. But what if you've got two children? What if you've got one child and you're thinking having another child? So you add a lot of value to a property if you can create a third bedroom. So this is what we did. Next slide, please. So this was bedroom two was at the back of the house. And at the front of the house, bedroom one is quite large, as you could see. And it had two windows, luckily. So... Um, this is what we did. If you just go back a, a moment. Uh, okay. Yeah. So just there in the middle on the landing was an airing cupboard. Just there, yeah, where the arrow is. That was the airing cupboard. And, of course, an airing cupboard has a door, and the three doors matched. So with a little bit of um, creativity with a pen and paper first, and then with a chat with the builder, this is what we did. This is the next slide. So we created a wall. And the the uh, the door from the airing cupboard becomes the door with a little sort of um, almost a, a little entrance of its own comes into one of the bedrooms. And we create a small bedroom, although it's it was big enough for a single bed and a wardrobe. We did knock a little bit of cupboard space out from over the stairs. There's always there's very often some good space over the stairs. So we created a space where we could get a single bed and a wardrobe. So altogether, that became a three-bedroom house. And again, um, yep, that's uh, that's been let for quite a number of years. Uh, only two tenants, two tenants in about nine years. That one's been only two tenants in about nine years. So the next slide, please. So moving the bathroom upstairs, I quite like this. So often. The bathroom is downstairs. So if we look at this uh, picture here, we've got we've got a tiny kitchen and the bathroom downstairs beyond the kitchen. So we can win two goals here. In the cold winter months when it's dark and you wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning and you need the loo, you've got to walk all the way downstairs in the dark <laughs> and... Um, into a cold bathroom. <laughs> so, but the other win is, if, so if we can get the bathroom upstairs, that's great. But the other win is, if we can move the bathroom, look, we can make the kitchen much better, bigger. We can make it into a kitchen, uh, you know, maybe a kitchen breakfast room, a kitchen with a table and chairs. And that gives us greater flexibility with the rear reception and the front reception. So this is what we did. Next one. So the only room in a house in the UK, the only room in a house that doesn't need natural light is the bathroom. So I'm always looking out for 
if there's enough room for me to put a bed, a bathroom in the middle without with and still being able to retain a master bedroom. Now, if we look at this, we've managed to keep bedroom two. Well, I've got two bedroom twos on there. <laughs> I've managed to keep two pretty big size bedrooms for mom and dad. And we've got a small bedroom and a medium sized bedroom for the children. Uh, but look, we've got a fantastic bathroom because what I do again, that's something the, once you've done it once, you know how to do it the second and third time. If you look, the bathroom overhangs the stairs. So that's great. Very often in, in old terraced houses, this is a cupboard over the stairs or um, a built in wardrobe. And in the old houses, the footings. Uh, underneath the floorboards on the ground floor are usually quite deep. So where I've put that um, blue circle, that's the sewer pipe. And once that's boxed, boxed in, nobody knows it's there. So the toilet feeds into that. That goes right down the side of the stairs. So that pipe will be in the corner of the rear reception, all boxed in with a bit of soundproofing as well because we don't want to be watching telly, hearing things go down that pipe. Uh, and that pipe goes straight down under the floorboards on the ground floor and normally out towards the back where the manhole is. And that's the other illustration where, if you look where it says bedroom three, that's where the sewer pipe is. So it's got to come all the way downstairs, under the floorboards, and there's usually a manhole cover on the backyard there and a builder will know how to do that but we need the creativity sometimes to explain to the builder what we went done but this can be a fabulous bathroom with tiles or paneling and nice led lights and people don't have to go down so sometimes if the kitchen's big enough you can also retain it one downstairs loo and a little hand basin as well it depends on the size of the property next slide please um, so that's the bigger kitchen now. Yes, that's so the same that, floor. That's there. showing you what we've done on the ground floor. So, so there we go. Uh, and by the way, if you just go back to that one a moment, uh, Mag, 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 uh, so, so as well, you can take out the side door in the kitchen um, and put French doors on the end, and then you can have a bigger run of kitchen uh, units as well. So that's another little mm -hmm. tip. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, where the French doors are, it's ideal then for a table and four chairs. Um, so that's quite good. Next slide, please. So the kitchen too small. So, the, so this, is, this is what I've done several times on HMOs. The kitchen's too small, but it's big enough to comply and be a bedroom. So I move the kitchen to the middle. So the rear reception becomes the kitchen diner. So if you could just show the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. No. Uh, maybe there's not a plan of that, but yeah, you just put it in the middle. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I just um, it just works well. Your middle reception becomes the kitchen. Your back room becomes a bedroom because it's a HMO. So your front reception, depending on the size of the kitchen diner, if it's compliant and big enough, it can be a kitchen diner lounge. If it's not. It can be a kitchen diner and you have the front reception as your lounge. Mm -hmm. And then you have, say, three bedrooms upstairs and you've got the kitchen as a bedroom now. Is, um, it, um, is it people often, um, often um, um, are scared of the costs of this? So moving the kitchen to the room, does that make a huge cost? Uh, from not, your not really, because your, your plumbing is all quite close by, really. It's, um, it's, it's very easy to move. Um, for kitchens, it's easier than moving bathrooms because bathrooms has got the, the big, big pipe that is the sewer pipe. Um, but um, sinks and washing machines and, um, uh, and dishwashers only need a small pipe. Um, and, of course, hot and cold water pipes are only small as well. It will cost you more in terms of kitchen units but it will make it more desirable. And sometimes you, you, you'll you want to knock the chimney out. Mm. And to knock a chimney out on the ground floor should should really only cost about five or six hundred pounds to, to knock a chimney out and put some, um, they call them gallows brackets, 
uh, or lintels in to support the chimney above. If you want to knock the chimney out all the way up, except on the roof, I avoid knocking it out on the roof because that can get complicated and costly then. But if I just knock it right out up to the loft space um, or up to uh, an outer bedroom above, it's going to cost me about a thousand pounds per chimney probably to do that. So it's up to you. Or there's the halfway house, which I've done as well, where I've just knocked part of the chimney out and created it as a feature and put the put the um, the hob and the oven in the housing where the chimney was to create a sort of a bit of a feature that can look quite nice sometimes. This strategy works particularly well where the stairs come off the, the middle reception by the, the rear reception. If the stairs are in the corner of the rear reception, you can't mm. make it a bedroom without putting a corridor in. So this can work, work really well um, in this case. Although I have to say, very often you have to put a corridor in to comply with building regs because um, building regs officers are very nervous about having kitchens anywhere near stairs. And of course, the stairs are the fire escape. Yeah. So there we are. Okay. But the guy in the back bedroom yeah. can escape. The guy in the back bedroom now that was the kitchen, he can escape through his own door into the garden yeah. or he can escape through an escape window. And again, I have, I've had it where a fire officer um, has, has insisted that we have an escape window, which is fairly easy to comment to do. Yeah. Okay. Next one. So that's the switch to now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bedroom too small. Bedroom becomes bathroom. Bathroom becomes bedroom. Yes, this is one I did in, in Birmingham. Um, the the bedroom was a real kind of, you know, that we call them box rooms. So it was really small. But in this case, it was for a, a small HMO. So um, we generally only put showers in HMOs. We don't want to put a bath in HMO for two reasons, because a bath full of water overflowing is going to cause a lot of damage. And the other reason is if you've got four people sharing one bathroom, you don't want somebody in the bath with all their smelly stuff and bubbly stuff lying there in the bath uh, and everybody else dying and needing the toilet. So we only put showers in HMO. So a shower in a small box room and, and a toilet and a hand basin. And then the bathroom was massive. The bathroom was really large. So just switching them over worked brilliantly well and, and again you've got to look at it you've got to the main thing you have to look for is whether that big fat sewer pipe can get to that other room and this mm -hmm. was a, this was a um uh, a semi-detached house so the sewer pipe was on the side so instead of the sewer pipe going that way we just made it put a turn in it and made it go the other way and worked absolutely perfectly fine so yeah um brilliant idea um loft conversion so uh, yes this is this is me i should i should probably have a hard hat on there but don't tell anybody will you <laughs> <laughs> it's only two of us Gary. so <laughs> so these these joists above my head are all brand new and um instead of just um just converting the loft space um, in these old houses, you get very high ceilings. So in this particular house, we didn't drop the joists on the ground floor, but we did drop them on the in the loft space. And we drop, managed to drop them down about 18 inches. That was enough room to actually give us two bedrooms and a bathroom in the loft space. So sometimes, it, you know, it's all going to be knocked around anyway. It's probably only going to cost a few thousand pounds more to drop the joists and you're going to have all brand new floorboards all brand new joists and it's going to be good to go for many many years to come so um and there's if if you're doing a fairly big one if you're doing a seven um sometimes six bed but seven or eight bed by doing this sort of major alteration um uh, the the lender will is going to be much more um, open to giving it a commercial valuation, which means we can get more money for the mm -hmm. a higher value. So well worth looking at. Um, and um, yeah, this is a fairly easy thing to do. If that box bedroom is too small, very often the wall of the box bedroom 
is a stud wall. That means in the old days, that means it means it was plaster and lath. So it's loads of intertwined slips of wood plastered over. And it's fairly easy to knock down. Great fun to knock them down as long as you've isolated the electricity. Uh, and then you get your builder to move the wall. In this case, this wall moved over about two feet. So it gave, it suddenly meant the box room was compliant, um, 6.52 square meters. And it didn't make the other room. That's the bigger room you can see there with the radiator. I think it's a radiator. It didn't make that room too small either. So it worked really, really well. Okay. And again, another way of adding value. This, this actually, this one was on a mentorship. And um, it was so easy. You can see there's quite a few cars parked there outside just about. And this was, a, a as they say, a no-brainer because knocked the wall down, dig the grass up, and parking for two cars. It was quite close to city centre. It was a good location. Um, and it's just you as an investor seeing things that other people don't notice. And don't tell the estate agent that's showing you around. Don't tell everybody else. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just saying that, um, uh, I mean, this is another one. You can see the slight colour difference in the slabs. This house, when we took it on, it was a disabled person that passed away. And uh, there was parking for one car. And, and where the newer slabs are, that was all grass. So we just dug that out and suddenly the one parking space became two. And I did a mentorship in, um, uh, where was I? Harrow. And there was a house very similar to this in Harrow. You know, the agent said those two parking spaces were worth £45,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, so you can add value with the parking space. You really can. And... Um, Oh yeah, this this was a. These are all real. These are all true. This house had a massive bathroom, huge bathroom, um, and as I said, we were we made it into a five bed HMO. Um, we didn't we didn't go up into the loft space because you don't have to do everything at the time. Um, you can come back and do things five years, ten years later when you've made some money out of the. When, when it's cash flow for a few years, when its value has gone up. Um, you don't have to try and do everything at once. So we decided on this one to do it as a five bed. And in a few years time, we'll, we'll revisit, we'll go back and we'll make it into a seven bed with three bathrooms. But this was, this was so good, it, massive big bathroom. So one has got a window, as you can see, and actually the other bathroom hasn't got a window. So two showers two toilets and two hand basins and five bedrooms. So five people sharing two showers, toilets, and and, uh, and it's just great. And this is a social housing HMO, by the way, for uh, homeless people or people that were homeless. They've got homes now. So, uh, yeah, at least you feel like you're giving back as well. This was a great one. Um, this mm -hmm. was a garage into a bedroom. Again, this was one we didn't do straight away. We waited about six years and came back and revisited it. Uh, the cost of moving um, gas meters and electric meters, you're talking of a starting price of around a thousand pounds to move a gas meter and about a thousand pounds to move electric meter. So this idea was the builders actually, and you can see you can see the wall lies back because actually we left the gas meter and electric meter exactly where it was and this and the um water meter actually as well and that's why that wall lies back about 18 inches so it did take a little bit of space off the room but the room's still compliant and it means the meters can be read at any time without going in the house and it means it, we didn't have to pay two thousand pounds plus to move two meters so that works really really well and that's a lovely little ensuite room. It's not very big, but it's compliant. And it's a lovely, lovely little room. Um, oh, yeah, this was one where, I, 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 you know, everybody groans about sunny flow toilets or masticated <laughs> toilets, as they're called. They can be a nuisance. You've got to put some signage up to say, only put toilet paper and poo down there. <laughs> um, but you've got to do that. 
but I would never put them in a communal toilet because mm. if any if anybody blocks it, you don't know who's done it. It's never their fault. But this, <laughs> these are two ensuite rooms, and um, yeah, the yeah we've got them as well. <laughs> yeah, they are they they, they are a pain. They are. A pain. <laughs> it's a way of giving an ensuite, and as long as you can really emphasize to the person in that room that it's a it's a toilet that needs some some um you know it has to be looked after <laughs> look after your toilet <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great one and this is just shows how um how the knowledge can be shared this is my son and uh, and his his partner he found this house himself i've been his mentor obviously well, I've been his mentor since he was born, I guess. <laughs> and um, and he found this himself. I mean, wow. You know, knowledge and training is so important. So this house had been sold twice and fell over. Um, the sale fell through twice. So therefore, they had some pain. They needed to sell. He saw the real potential in this. As you can see here, you can't see the full picture in this, but it can be extended over the garage. Um, and and actually, and there's some there's a little bit of land the side of the garage as well, a little bit enough enough to make it wider if we wanted to. Uh, and, and opposite where they're standing, that the, the it, it's the end of a cul de sac, and it's a huge amount of space where they're looking towards us. And there's enough room there to build a double garage on their own land, and therefore the garage can become another reception. So not only can they build over the garage, the garage can become another a reception and they can build a double garage opposite. So so wow. well done. Uh, he's got a good teacher, hasn't he, obviously? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Um, this is something I really enjoy, bungalow flips. And, um, and anybody that's been on a mentorship with me, they'll know at some point I'll mention bungalow flips. So very often with bungalows, they're the wrong way around for today's living. So very often, and you can see, see, you can see from the plan here, mm -hmm. we've got the porch on the front. So that's the front entrance. But look, on the back are two bedrooms and 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 a conservatory. So who's gonna want to sit in? You can't have you can't sit in the conservatory and have a glass of wine in the summer with your friends. Not unless they all walk through your bedroom. So, <laughs> so what I like to do is I like, and, and sometimes you're very, very lucky with the bungalow. Sometimes the internal walls are all stud walls. Um, sometimes you can create, you can really create a great um, opportunity by moving the lounge to the back. Sometimes you don't have to really do anything else because we're all, we all like to sit in our back garden we like to have the barbecue in the back garden. Um, and so it's modern living, really. And sometimes I saw a bungalow very, very recently um, while I was teaching somebody. And we had the fantastic opportunity if we'd have wanted to. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know whether they will or not. But, you know, of creating one of those wonderful lounge kitchen diners, uh, modern living. And then the other consideration with bungalows, people that buy them are in their 50s or 60s. Uh, they don't want to go upstairs anymore. So if we can create a low-level bath and a shower and toilet and hand basin, that satisfies all the needs. A low-level bath, so when you're getting old, older, you can get in and out of the bath easy, easily. A shower, because it's quick and easy, particularly if, if, if you can't get in and out of a bath. But a bath's important. If, we can have a, if you can have a bath as well, it's ideal because, you know, we all like to go for walks. We all get aches and pains. We all want a radox bath when we're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> so so there we are. Yeah, it's a great win in bungalows. And, of course, the people that go into nursing homes, the people that, that pass away in bungalows, they're inevitably in their 80s and 90s. So the decor is pretty sad. The disadvantage with bungalows, the disadvantage is, nice that they cost more because they're on a bigger plot of land. But as a flip, you may be able to make 20 or 30 or 40,000 if you do them right, compared to say maybe 10 to 15 to 20,000 with, with a normal house. So there we go. Okay. And this is just something I added in here because the lender said no. 
So um, this is a wooden staircase. This is this building is two flats, and uh, I, I I have to say, me and me and Magdalena have got something in common here because we don't like to say no or can't. So um, this this broker had said, no, you can't do it. I'm out teaching someone. I'm saying, I know a man who can. I think I know a man who can. And it took a little while, but yeah, they're, they're so pleased because yeah, they've got two flats there. And because, you know, that's again where you can find some real excitement because if people say no and and both these flats needed refurbishment then other people walk away and it's knowing the right people it really is good broker and look out for original features these have been houses that um that i've worked on and and we've refurbished i mean wow you know don't necessarily throw everything out you know, if you've got an open fireplace like that in a in an HMO or a, a buy to let, you probably don't want people having open fires. But you can you can block that up. You can make it as a feature. You can leave them in the bedrooms. This lovely plaster work at the bottom of the stairs with a picture of the Queen or something there in the middle. These lovely stained glass windows, a lovely flooring. I mean, this is fabulous. Those turned um, spindles on the stairs, they would quite, quite cost quite a lot of money, quite a lot of intricate work. So don't throw everything out. You know, look at what you can retain because they're brilliant features. And make sure that everything you, you're, you're uh, doing, I like to source some of the materials. Even now, I like to source some of the materials myself. So you want to find a double glazing manufacturer. You don't want to go to a big company or a middleman. I've got a friend of a friend who turns up and measures your windows. He has adverts in the local papers. He has a sharp suit on. He measures all the windows. He charges a fortune. He doesn't do anything. He measures the windows as a manufacturer make them, and he adds a massive margin on. So, so yeah, just look out for that. Go and find, if you're in property yourself, Go and find a local manufacturer that makes the actual windows. I've been using the same guy for about 17, 20 years, something like that. Tiles. I go to a massive tile warehouse, huge, great tile warehouse. And uh, my best deal was a pound a square meter. I love a deal. <laughs> my builder said, how much were these then, Gary? I said, a pound a square meter. He didn't believe me. <laughs> and very recently on a mentorship, the price for the carpet was 1,800 quid. Luckily, I got there before they had it put down. I said, that's too much. We went to a really tatty, dirty shop front with big rolls of carpet in the window. I said, that's where we need to go. He went around, measured up that afternoon, and it was 900 pounds instead of 1,800 pounds. And you, some of you may have heard of LNPG, Howden's, um, and, and local kitchen companies as well. I've got a local one I use as well. And, yeah, we we must, must, must be playing trade price. So LNPG's kitchen's a magnet, um, but you can you can get a trade deal with Howden's as well. We can uh, you can all get trade cards. And really, if a kitchen if a kitchen retail is around six thousand nine hundred seven, this is a real one. This is this is the, the, the you know. The lady couldn't believe I got a kitchen for three thousand five hundred pounds. You know. So. Okay, so um, what I can't remember what the next slide is now. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, estate agents. Oh yeah, this is this is this is uh, uh, this is so true. Um, a house, and the lady said, and don't be thinking that you'll be able to make a driveway on the front. You'll never get permission. Well, again, me and Magdalena don't like that, do we? There's no such thing as never or can't in our vocabulary. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was wonderful. It was, uh, as Thin Lizzy said, don't believe a word. See, that's a rock band, Thin Lizzy. Some of you are old enough to remember Thin Lizzy. Um, and there's always a way. So I phoned up. I asked the, I asked the council. Uh, the count, funnily enough, the, the Be highway, nice to the council, Gary. Yeah, yeah, the highways planning guy was on holiday. And I was amazed a week later, get a phone call at half past six in the evening. 
And he said, he said, I'm just phoning about you, you want to put a drive on. I said, oh, I, first of all, very humble. Oh, I'm thank you so much. I didn't expect to call this time. I'm really appreciate you calling me this time. So I was really nice. And 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 he said, uh, he said, let me have a look. He said, I'm, I'm, let me have a look on Google Earth. And he looked there and then he said, I don't think there's any problem with that. You're just on the straight, he said. If you were just a bit further around on the bend, we couldn't, he said, but you're just on the straight. So, um, yep, parking for three cars. How much value did that add to a house? Incredible, incredible. And took away a big challenge because other than mm. that, the parking was at the back of the property. So, mm. and this was the only house out of five houses because it was on the end that that was allowed. So, brilliant. So next slide. So this is this is uh, probably the the biggest transformation in terms of look I've ever done, uh, which, as you can see, I don't like houses without front doors. The house on the left hasn't got a front door. The front door's on the side. Oh, so God, I, and not you as well. So I put the front door on the front, <laughs> and we built a we built a downstairs. It, it that front window on the left was the downstairs toilet and hand basin. But mm -hmm. we made that into a fabulous hall and built an extension on the side and an extension on the back. And as you can see, the rendering. And mm -hmm. and by the way, it's the same windows. We just sprayed them grey. Mm, so you don't good. necessarily have to nice. throw away all the windows. So, so uh, what is the value? Um, what, what the, what's the numbers on this one, Gary? Like how oh, much well, was it, the... it was It was pretty spectacular. It was... Um, <laughs> Oh, come was, on, go on then. Yeah, it was it was purchased at uh, um, 213, I think it was. And uh, four years later, it was 460,000. So we didn't have it. We didn't need to take the money out there. And then we left the money in. Uh, so we, we did benefit from the market as well. Hmm. But yeah, um, 460,000 in four years. Where can you make that kind of money? <laughs> so brilliant and this this is me teaching people and helping people i'm sorry i haven't got a picture of you and me Magdalena. i know it's been a, uh, it's been a long time though yeah yeah and as you can see we have some fun as well there we are with gingerbread men <laughs> it's a guy that was locked down we couldn't meet up in hotels oh. so the, the property business could continue so we were in a garden center outside under a gazebo um, uh, eating gingerbread men. <laughs> oh, and that one in the far. Oh, you've yeah. got me somewhere here. Oh yes, there you There's are. Yes. yes, yeah. That was a that was a, a meeting of of of, uh, and we have some fun. You know, that we was, always get some food. I remember that was lunch. Yeah, lunch. <laughs> and then there's that one uh, on the far right where someone created a bar under the stairs, which was a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> um and this one's a massive the one in the middle you see the massive crack a massive settlement mm -hmm. crack you could get your finger in there if you could just go back one um that's uh, that oh one. there that, this one that one the, uh, I, i'm just going to point this out to you the bottom right hand corner that's the worst <laughs> toilet i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> so there we go and just this is me dream big Touch, feel, smell your dreams. You've got a dream big. So uh, that's uh, that's a red um, McLaren. Uh, my son-in-law works really, really hard and plays hard as well. So that's his McLaren. And that's me. I was uh, testing out Porsches in my local dealership. I really want the white, uh, the white electric Porsche there. So, yeah, it's on my goal list. So I think you spoke to Nanik on this topic. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So there Thank we go. You. Thank you very much, Gary. That was awesome. I think uh, let's just get back to our, um, to our, uh, well, let's see the comments because there have been some uh, comments here. Um, who who enjoyed this presentation? Like, I think it was really good and I took some things um, myself. So um, just give us a bit of a, 
give, give Gary a little bit of uh, um, uh, applause and hearts, maybe some send some love, uh, likes and everything you can share this video because there may be someone um, who will um, who will need that kind of advice. It's a it's a lonely journey sometimes, and sometimes you can see something straight away, but when you think and you're in your head. Uh, you need somebody else to point that out. So um, just a few people um, on the beginning were saying hello. Um, hello that's hello. nice. Um, uh, and hi, uh, hi, Gary. Hi, Magda. Uh, super live. Thank you for organi organizing it. Um, Michal, hello. Uh, so that was a really, that was a really a good presentation i think it was love it was it was great it was very helpful and very straightforward this is what i love about mentors and about you gary and, and mark and you know they always um they always explain everything in such an easy way that is just like yeah okay i can do that as well and um and you can do that you know he's just seeing like you said what um what other people don't see one of the questions that i have often got is like how do we know how much value we will increase and uh, you know i can spend unlimited probably money on and budget and uh, and with the uh, with the uh, materials that are raising at the moment how do we know that what we do will uplift the value how uh, how we will um, you know how can well, we evaluate that yeah, I think that's a, a really good question. And, and the first one you'll do, the, you know, some people get analysis paralysis. I don't know whether you've heard of that, but some people analyze and analyze and analyze so much that they never, ever take the first step. So the first one, you have to just do as much due diligence as you can. I use right move uh, because right move. What we want to be doing is looking at the sold prices in that area. And I won't go back more than two years. So I'm looking for comparisons within, when I say the area, with that, in the actual postcode. So firstly, I'm doing a search of that postcode and looking for similar properties and seeing what they've sold at. Then, I'm, then if there's not enough there to give me a, a, a fair comparison, then I'll extend that to a quarter of a mile. And then I'll extend it to a half mile. I'll try very hard not to go beyond that unless I really have to. But a perfect example, um, I had, uh, I saved somebody making a terrible mistake, actually. They were comparing a property in one area of a city to another area three miles away. And three miles is too far. It's got to be within about half a mile maximum, really, because areas change. So that's really, really important. So we don't want to be comparing. We might have a little look at what price, what price properties have been sold at or what they're up for sale for in that area. But really, solid proof is what they've sold for in the last two years. In terms of then trying to work out the costs, um, yeah, they have gone up a lot. Uh, building materials have gone up a lot. So we need to um, we need to get an idea of how much it's going to cost. So it's great having a quote from a builder and, and make sure they're reputable builders. Do your due diligence on the builder. That that's a whole nother talk. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Do your diligence, due diligence on the builder, but but also you need to start knowing how much it costs to have a double guys window put in. How much it costs to have a rewire, how much it costs to have. You don't always need a rewire, by the way. Sometimes you can have an upgrade. Sometimes the wiring is fine. You just need an upgrade. Um, how much a plasterer charges a day? How many walls can a plasterer plaster in a day? Does it just need a skim? One of the things actually in that, I hear a lot of people talk about back to brick, back to brick. I never take the plaster back to brick unless it needs it. Most of the time, the, the plaster is quite solid and we can get away with a skim, skim over. Um, uh, very rarely will I go back to brick. If it's really falling off and crumbling, then yes. But, you know, rarely will I do that unless I need to. So, and so yeah, get to know often the people, Often, don't you think, Gary, often people want some sort of percentage. So if I put a, a WC, that gives me 15% or, you know, 
how can we be, uh, you know, how can we take that Zupla often does uh, or right move does some sort of statistics of, okay, extra bedroom is this much percent and, uh, you know, WC or if you add the drive and things like that. Uh, but um, what's the challenge with that and what should we be careful when we yeah, are using Yeah, I, I think you really have to. So if, I'm, if I've made a two-bedroom house into a three-bedroom house, I'm going to be looking for three bedroom houses in that area. Uh, and and I will and this is where this is where this is the difference between people succeeding and not succeeding in property is whether you can be bothered or whether you'd rather watch Coronation Street or EastEnders. No, they people. don't watch Coronation Street. That's a Netflix <laughs> generation, Gary. Coronation <laughs> Street is your <laughs> heist, heist. Um, so, so yeah, I I think that people completely underestimate the time it takes. First of all, to do research to find properties and find their area, but then to do proper comparables to the sold prices. So you you re it takes it takes a lot of time. It really takes a lot of time. And and although my son got you know found that house himself, he's got he's in property now. He has an HMO. His first one, but the area that he's in, the area is, is two hours from where he lives, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell him what area to invest in. He had to do, he researched about six areas, got it down to about three, got it down to one. That's mm -hmm. what you've got to do, and it's the same with working out the valuation. You've got to sit there on Rightmove or any other other. Uh, portal that you want to use and you've got to actually drill down and find those comparables and make mm -hmm. a sensible um the, the you know I, it's it's the best guesstimate and that's what scares people it's a it's a guess the best will in the world it's always going to be a guesstimate when i was the boss of hamleys hamleys turned out when i joined hamleys they turned over 22 million a year when i left hamleys they turned over 30 million a year yes um so uh, but you know, at the end of at the end of one year, a business like Hamleys is planning the projections for the next year. So they're saying, how many of these do you think will sell, Gary? How many of those do you think will sell, Gary? And I'm asking all my teams, how many of these are going to sell? Mm -hmm. Best will in the world, it's a guess. You're giving it your best guess. And it's the same with property. You're doing all you can to make that guess as accurate as it can be. But it is only going to be a guess it's going to be the most calculated risk is what professional people call it but really it's the best guess they can possibly have at what it will be worth so, okay gary, gary uh, and, and i think you know that's that's uh, is it, that fear is it of doing the first step which why you are uh, and you you know you're the best person to ask about those fears because you are with them uh, on the very beginning of the uh, journey we you know we all need a mentor and uh, and um, i had a after the mentorship and after uh, meeting mark and i thought i can do all this myself i know everything now you know they've taught me so i know uh, but then sometimes you're just in your head too much you know you you are you, you're calculating everything and you don't know which way to go and somebody can just point it out to you straight yeah this is how you do um but what what is the biggest challenge of people that are starting out like uh you know some people can relate to this so adding value is great but you have to find the property you have to start thinking about it you know there's a lot of steps before uh, where actually you're adding value and you're doing that refurbishment. But um, so, you know, from your experience, what is the biggest fear or what is the biggest challenge of people that are uh, on the very beginning of the journey? I think I think the biggest thing is people don't realise how much effort they've got to put in. I, I, I liken learning about property is like going to university. So many, many people go on property training courses. And as I mentioned I'm a mentor uh, and was trained myself by Legacy, uh, who are now called Asset Academy. So, so people pay a lot of money to go on property training courses. But it's just like going to university. You pay that money, and then if you don't read around the subject, you've, you're going to have a very narrow knowledge. So, so there's two things that are really important. Just like if you were at university, if you try to answer your assignments without 
going in, into the library or going onto the internet and reading your your answer to the to the lecturer's questions the answer to the exams would be very narrow so you need to read around the subject you really do so um there's various aspects if you want to learn about serviced accommodation you're never going to learn about all there is to learn about service accommodation by going on a training course you're gonna to have to read around it as well and the same with hmos or buy to lets you've, you've got to read around the subject but you've also got to take action you can't you can't just wait and wait and wait for the perfect time because there is no perfect time and i was asked recently what would be my number one tip to anybody starting out in property and my number one tip is exactly what Magdalena has done and she did it right from the start and actually she did it before she got into property she did it right from the start when she came to the UK <laughs> and that's and that's networking you've got to network you know it's incredible when I think back to the information and knowledge I gained not from just from the training course I was on but from the from going to network meetings, not mm -hmm. just network meetings, but so there's there's property network meetings all over the UK, different brands, different organisations. You're going to learn from the people in the room. You're going to chat. You're going to have a tea, coffee, a glass of wine afterwards. You're going to get to know some of those people. The other thing is you're going to learn because most of them have a guest speaker. So someone standing at the front going to talk for half an hour and some of them might have a book to sell or a video or whatever. You're going to learn from those as well. And don't be too keen to rush off either. You know, I've <laughs> I've got home at half past one in the morning when the talk finished at half past nine. So don't be too keen to rush off because you can learn from just – Especially when you're first starting out, you can just sit there and listen. You know, people mm. don't mind. It's a wonderful industry in that respect because people help each other. So, mm. uh, and then there's all the other ways of networking. The local chamber of commerce, uh, Birmingham's chamber of commerce, when I started out, were brilliant. There were free training courses. There were very heavily subsidised training courses. Not, not just not in property, but in in running a business, time management for one thing, or accounts or hmrc or things marketing all the things that a business is social media marketing a lot of these things are provided by the chamber of commerce at very very subsidized prices and again the ch local chamber of commerce very often do breakfast meetings uh mm -hmm. you know you get, <laughs> so you if know, you want you, if you want you will find a way isn't it that's that's yeah. the basis of Absolutely. that you'll find the people that are doing it and you just around them and you just like a sponge take everything in but um when i work with people gary there are you know, it's different when you've got some money uh, because you can then learn about the subject or you get somebody who knows like yourself and then you just do it yeah you hold their hands you just encourage them and they just lead, need a little bit uh well as many people that are uh, watching us now they know i've started with no money and uh, we well was in debt when i started and then there was that great idea of uh, investing in a uh, uh, income generating assets as mark would say uh, but um i found it a bit um a bit well shocking that it wasn't as easy as uh, as i thought it would be because when you have no money everything takes longer because you have to you have to learn you have to network and then uh, i remember sitting on one of the trainings with uh, you know with legacy and uh, and i thought okay if i take this on the bridge i would have to pay 600 pounds every month be, you know until i refinance and that will be six to eight months and i'm thinking well how i'm going to get the money like that because you know, my salary just covers our bills and uh, and i didn't have extra 600 pounds so um it is very hard and i think people that are watching here and um uh, and have no money thinking yeah okay it's great all to say that and we go on these courses and they all say you can do it and and it's you know great seeing your presentations but it takes real money to pay extra you know a survey evaluation um a, you know quotation from the builder insurance everything that's an extra cost and if we haven't got any spare money or any what would 
would be your advice? And I'm sure you've seen people uh, throughout your mentoring um, that have no money to start. And what can we do to get some extra money? Because at the end of the day, um, that's what was one thing I had in mind was like, how can I generate extra money using my knowledge? So how can I run, uh, rent some rooms for other landlords? How can I provide some, um, I don't know, I want to see houses for investors from London just to see if they fit as a HMO. I charge a little bit on that, you know, things like that. So what would you uh, say? How can we create an extra money to invest? Because there is no investment or investing in property without money. They, they have to be some money, ours or not. But they have to be some money to invest. Yeah, I think I think there are there are ways that you can do this. You can do it by attracting angels. Um, and people often ask me, "Where do you find angels?" I, I, I've got no angels. Um, and 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 I uh, I've got another talk about angels, by the way. And so um, I think everyone has to say now, Gary, we want your other talk about angels <laughs> because that's another big question. Okay, so we do that. We do another session on that, but. But you know, a lot of it is about you as a person. It's if you've if you put a lot of time and effort in, if you've gone into, um, if you've taken time and trouble to, um, to 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 actually. Sorry, I was just looking at my wife on the security camera. Just just come back from Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little bit distracted. So um, so if you. Um, if to attract angels, you have got to be confident. You've got to know what you're talking about. Uh, you've got to be completely committed. If you haven't done any work, no one's going to come to you. Yeah. Uh, and I liken it to, uh, I, you know, whatever religion you are, if, you're, um, if you've attended church or the mosque or the, the, the temple or whatever religion you are, and you've heard um, the religious leader at the front talk about angels. And you went and talked to them afterwards and said, well, you know, I, I've, I've never seen an angel. You know, you talk about angels a lot. Angels never come to me. The priest or, or whoever in your religion would say that's because you're not ready to see an angel yet. And that's exactly the same with property. That, you know, you can go around chasing people and sometimes you see it at network property meets where you're the new person there. They're all coming up to you trying to find out if you've got any money. <laughs> and the angels will come to you if you've got the right deal. Uh, but also it's about you, the confidence, your body language, what you say. There's a great saying. I don't know who said it. I'll, I'll take the credit, but it wasn't me. <laughs> it's not what you say. It's the music in your voice. It's not what you say. It's the music in your voice. We are all very good at, we call it sussing people out, don't we? We're very good at knowing the, am I allowed to say bullshitters? Knowing the bullshitters. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> you know, I think all the kids yeah, are in bed. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, we've got to know our stuff. And you will find someone that will invest in you as, a, as an angel or as a joint venture partner if you've put in the work but, yeah. but there's there's ways somebody where... and somebody gary said uh well we haven't got a name because it's from the group but if you haven't got money to start with you um think harder and get better deals but you will have to be focused enough so yeah it is true but one uh um, you remember we talk about it after my mentorship when I said, you know, it would be so much easier if I had the money. But when you haven't got the money, you learn how to create the deals without money. And it's just in your blood later. You just think of everything. How can I not put a penny from my pocket to create this? And it is harder and it takes more effort, but it's uh, uh, it's possible. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and some strategies need they still i don't think really if we're honest there's any strategy that needs no money so so some people decide that they're going to do sourcing so they're going to find deals for other people and that's going to make them a fortune but then i see people say that and then they're not prepared to do the work you've got to do the work you've got a network like hell if you're going to be a sourcing agent you've got to find the deals before the estate agents do um, you've got a network with the good estate agents. There's one guy that was so good at it that the estate agent gave him 
a desk at the back of the estate agents because he was good at finding people. He was an in-betweener. He was he was someone mm. that connected people. No, that, um, that's uh, just, that's good. Um, um, well, what about Gary? Okay, that's all good to say. Uh, that's great. You know, I, I understand that. Yeah, we can create some money so we can do sourcing. Rent to rent is a great one. Great rent to rent is the one that gave me financial freedom or uh, or, or push me to uh, uh, leave work. Um, and it gives you a steady cash flow, which is another great bonus because we can get a little bit of money on sourcing, but we never know we never know when it's coming. But what if I'm working a lot? And I know you say, okay, do the work, it will take me longer. But really, you know, we, we can hardly meet the needs of every month to pay the bills. How I'm going to think about it, because how I see it is I have to take control of my finances first. And this was the first thing I had to do. And it was hard. You know, when I went back, came back from the three days training and I signed up with Legacy with the big debt and I was having my own debt and I had to look at my statements and I'm thinking, shit, this is going to be hard now. So control of your finances, which is the beginning of, uh, you know, the, the, the road to financial freedom, because you can't control bigger money if you can't control what you have now. But if I haven't got any, of, uh, any money, I'm thinking about properties, I'm thinking about sourcing, rent to rent. I don't know yet what to do, but I know I, I work a lot for not lots of money and I have to create some money and how I'm going to take control of my finances. So with that in mind, I can buy properties later or I can do, you know, the, the business. But you know, and I know that when, I mean, when you haven't got the money, you're not creative. When you haven't got the money, you, you, you can't talk to people with that freedom or uh, with that energy where, oh, okay, let's get some angels on board. You haven't got the money to go to that networking for 20, 30 pounds because that's at an expense and yeah yeah it, 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 you know i know my, not everyone is in that kind of situation but they are people uh that are in you know in, in that and they want to do something with their life that's why they meet some people online or or they listen to uh, uh people but they may need some help and how do they how can we go about that because it, you can't say to somebody then oh just go and buy a house and have a deposit or borrow a deposit from so it's just like you know, the steps, you know, small steps, like we say, uh, baby steps. So how we take control of the finances and how, what do you think? Oh, I, about I, think I think, I think you're absolutely right. We, we get very little, little financial education at school. I don't know whether it's better in Poland, but it's not good in the UK really. Um, uh, and it's been said for a long time that our education system is designed for um, people to get jobs, not for people to become entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, some people saying that the government are trying to make it more and more difficult for ordinary individuals to own property now. They've given the green light to banks for buying property. We know Debenhams are turning some of their, not Debenhams, sorry, John Lewis are turning some of their stores into apartments, for instance, city centre living or whatever you want to call it. So there's other big players coming into property student accommodation the students union have got property i think virgin have got property so more and more big companies lloyd's them. bank it was all all over the news is it lloyd's bank yeah. lloyd's bank uh, is going to yeah. become the biggest landlord yeah so so what can we do the world's changing uh, we've all seen the terrible headlines the last couple of weeks um you know energy bills going up food, food shortages so Sometimes we have to look a bit deeper and a bit differently at what we can actually do. So I started a new business in June last year, uh, not property related, because we mustn't have all our eggs in one basket either. So um, despite being a, a very successful property investor and having a, a very successful retail career, I was looking for something else. Uh, and currently... I'm making around 1% a day, Monday to Friday. And it's very exciting. Um, I've been doing it now since since June. So what's that, about 14, 15 months? Mm -hmm. uh, every, single, every single Saturday I get paid from this business. And, um, and it's fantastic. It really is fantastic. So um, what 
some of you may have heard of is um, you some of you are all probably thinking is it trading he said one percent is it trading it, it's forex trading but actually what makes this really unique is it's a company that's been around for over two years so we know they're solid uh, and they trade for us so there's no um, I don't have to do any trading. Now, when I worked in London, I actually met a guy who was a Forex trader. He was a greengrocer. Uh, and, God, was he full of stress. He used to, he used to, uh, at the back of his, I think he spent more time in the back of his greenhouse, at a greengrocer shop, looking around the corner, see if he got any customers, while he looked at his candles and stalagmites and stalactites and things. And, oh, just complicated. And, and he... You know, one day he'd lose and the next day he'd gain, and it was just so complicated. Um, but this is really, I'm really excited by this. I was excited, as I say, I was excited when I became the general manager of Hamleys. I was excited when I walked on the hot coals at Anti and Robbins Unleashed the Power Within. I was excited when I bought my first investment property. And now I'm finding this really, really exciting um, to get those kind of returns. Um, and it, you, there's two ways you can do this in the organization that I, I'm in, the business that I'm in. You can be very passive and just put some money in, a small amount of money. You can start with $300, which is about £220, and you, you don't have to put any other money in. There's not a monthly subscription or a charge or anything. You can just absolutely, you can just start with $300. And, and on today's percentages, today's figures, that $300 becomes $100,000 in about five and a half years. That's if you don't do anything else. And some people do that. Some people want it as, as a, a bit like a pension. And then there are some people that um, invite some family and friends to, and, and grow a team. And if you grow a team, the five and a half years gets less and less and less. So one guy went from $300 to $100,000 in a year, less than a year. I think it was about 11 months. So that was because he grew, grew a team. So it, it, it really is a very, very sound business and a great business model. And there's more and more exciting things in the pipeline, too. So if you'd like some more information about this, talk to Mag Magdalena. Um, because because um, I know the man. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, we can do a Zoom together about this. Um, but we've got a great, I can, you know, I or Magda can send you a great video to watch as well. Um, it just works superbly well. And, and it's, it's a small investment. And I think more and more, uh, you know, I was I was really excited starting Legacy, but it was really hard. And I can see more and people, uh, more and more people, they don't carry on because of this. It, it's just hard to have the breakthrough. And, and um, every extra money, you know, it, it's helpful. And if you can buy that first deal, because that first deal makes all the all the difference is it? it's the first rent to rent is the first source source deal or is the first property you you buy but uh, if you haven't got any money it is really hard to start so uh, it, it, you know it, it's it can be done and you see people which mean you know different uh, educational companies that they do it but um, when you don't then you think about yourself like well I'm not good enough to do that is it? I'm not good enough to do this what the other people uh, you know do but you never know what kind of situation they were in or you don't know um you know their circumstances so like you you know if you want any any more information about it and this is something that um we, we do in a small group with gary and he's got uh you know some other property uh people because um at some point everyone is looking for something different you know to to uh to to grow something else or to have like you said another pot of money because i remember from the very beginning i think it was uh um, one of the mentors who said, you know, just think about the pots. You know, if you've got 25, 25, 25, 25,000, you buy one house and then you refinance. It's a great strategy, but you need the pot of 25, <laughs> pot of 25. And, and if you, 
uh, it, it's it's not only the bulk of money, but it's the time to think and be creative. It's the time to network and to be, uh, you know, nice and kind to people and have the time to chat with them. When you are struggling and you, uh, you know, you've got kids, you've got husbands or a wife, you've got your work and you're working 70 hours a week and you, you haven't got the time. You're not relaxed to do that. You're not, you know, you will try to make money fast and uh, and that's where the, where, where the mistakes happens. And I, I know that because it happened to me. You know, I've tried really hard to get angels in the very beginning. And you, when we met on my mentorship, you remember that wasn't, it wasn't easy, is it? It wasn't like uh, yeah. it is now. So you, you've you seen that journey and you know how it was in the beginning, how it is now. So um, I found it really, um, really exciting, like you said, is that people can make some money easier. And it's up to you if you think that making money is easy or hard. We talk about hard work. We talk about the time that you have to put. But making money doesn't have to be hard. Uh, it, it, it's just you learn that um, later on, isn't it, Gary? With age, it comes. And when, you, and when you learn a little bit more about money generally, the money markets, um, it, it's amazing that Forex trading, which remember I don't do someone does it for me an organization does it for me but then you realize that all the banks and large organizations in the world do forex trading I was uh, lucky enough I, I won't divulge too much but let's just say I, I mentored somebody who was a multi-millionaire um, who, who had a very big business supplying some very well-known retail outlets very very well known and the one of these retail outlets and, and he was shocked that i hadn't realized this is a high street name they have their own forex traders because if you're a massive company and you're importing things from other countries and you're selling stuff in the uk it's in your interest to have someone that trades currencies so that you're going to get the best deal all the time. So, so if you've got to buy, if I've got to buy, um, let's just say I was buying um, um, apples from France, Fran French is euros. So when euro, when the euro drops, I want my company to buy euros cheaply. And when they go up, I've got a stock of euros. I don't need to rise the prices because I've bought my euros early. So having someone trade, trade Forex, do Forex trading, which is exactly that. It's buying, it's buying and selling currencies constantly, 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 and giving me 1% a day. Incredible. In fact, it was more that. So we're averaging about 5% five to five and a half percent a week but until covid really bedded in we were getting seven to ten percent a week so you know and i expect that to come back eventually i really do but the great so thing fingers. Is, yeah i mean the great thing is that yeah i you can start with if if you if you've only got a small amount of money like like magdalena says if you if you find finding that 20 pounds to get to a network meeting difficult, you can start this with 220 pounds roughly. So three hundred dollars is about 220 pounds. If you've got if you got two or three thousand pounds, you can you can do this as well. If you've got five thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds, you can do this as well. And yet to start a property journey with ten thousand pounds even would be quite difficult to start a property journey with five thousand pounds would be quite difficult for most people and i have to say this is where magdalena is exceptional you know even even when she started she was an exceptional focused person um oh, and, got it. And, and so true you know i love you <laughs> <laughs> i told so guy to say that i've uh, i wrote him an email what he's supposed to say about me so that's but, but it, it, it <laughs> is. you later <laughs> <laughs> and for most people you know if you if you've if you've got a thousand pound in the bank it's probably paying you half a percent so it's actually going down in value uh, and yet 
The bank is using your money trading on the Forex market. All the banks trade on the Forex market. It's the biggest trading market in the world by far, massively, mm -hmm. massively bigger. Uh, and this organization that, that I've become part of, I'm an executive in the organization. I love it as much as I'd love property. So, yeah, um, talk to Magna about it because we, we can't have all our eggs in one basket. Even if, you're a, even if you're listening to me and you're a successful property investor, we mustn't have all our eggs in one basket. We must diversify our income streams and passive income is by far the best. And I think it will be great, um, Gary. I don't know if you guys want, and if you do, just give us some, you know, hearts and likes and comments. You, you, we can organize a webinar and you can talk about the, the, the finances. And, uh, you know, this was something we, like you said, we're not trained and, uh, uh, and I had to make lots of mistakes to learn that. But if you think about it, um, you can't control or you can borrow money if you cannot control them. If you don't know about this and, and you're not very disciplined and um, and you don't know the simple rules, which are simple when you know them, but nobody's really teaching you, you, you can't borrow money. You can't have a partner. You can't have an angel because uh, um, you, you, you will, you will uh, fail. And that will cost you money as well. So that was great talking to you, Gary. I think yeah, if anyone wants any any uh, advice, I'm sure you you can uh, uh, you know message Gary. You've got his profile on Facebook, and you can um, uh, just uh, reach out if anyone needs any help. This is great about people that I've been surrounded with. Um, is that we could just you know just have that little chat sometimes, that, that um, little advice. Um, Yolanta is asking, how do you take new people for mentoring? And if yes, how it works? And um, uh, just I'll let you explain how the... Yeah, how uh, to... I'm, I'm very happy to help and mentor people in the Forex trading organisation that, that I'm in, and I love doing that. But in property, I am linked and associated and, and subcontract to... Um, legacy and and uh, as, so what is asset called asset academy now so uh, you have to be a student of asset academy um, and i'm very loyal to them i've been very loyal to them for because they were the they were the people i learned from and um and so i i so you have to go through the training and uh, uh, yeah. um choose the package with mentors and gary is on the panel for yeah. uh, for a mentor and you can choose gary and uh, to um to, to be mentored by Gary, that's that's the way. But if you want to be on Gary's teams, uh, you can uh, join his other uh, business and, uh, and uh, you'll meet him on the, on the webinars. And um, it, that's how Gary is, you know, like calm and really helpful and, and holding your hand. And that's somebody that you need, uh, you, know, you need in your team. You need somebody who'll be cheering you. It goes you right back to, to me really uh, in the early days of retail. Uh, what youth training schemes um, and uh, investors in people and MVQs. I've just always loved people development. I love helping people because if you know, the, there's a, the, again, I don't know who said it. I, I'm trying to think, it might have been Jim Rohn. If I, the more people you help, the, the, the wealthier you'll become. Yeah. The more people um, you help become wealthy, the wealthier you become. And that's great. And it was great having you, Gary, here. And I hope that people, you know, got some value from it. And if they want more, then we will carry on uh, doing this sometimes. I know you you, you, you never say no. <laughs> yeah, we need to do one of those live live fizzy Fridays in, in Coventry. In Coventry well. or in Birmingham. <laughs> and we're meeting probably before Christmas. And, and yeah. uh, like I said, it, it is good to have somebody who is cheering you, uh, cheering your name along the way uh, because uh, what I always say to people is that I have people around me in the very beginning who believed in me more than I did in myself and one of them was Gary and uh, you know he's always seen something and he's saying I was so focused and I'm thinking gosh I wasn't at all you know I didn't know what I was doing I was just doing something thinking the quicker I go through that hell the, the faster that will finish and I'll just achieve what I want uh, but um, Gary definitely seen something else and it's good to have people like that um, uh, along the, the way and this journey Journey that we are on and uh, thank you very much Gary for everything you've done thank you and all, uh, for, thank you for life we've this was uh, uh, we've gone gone beyond my limit 
Yeah, yeah. Time to go and get the proper <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it was it was great to have Gary, and as you can see, you can learn a lot from him. And it's great to have uh, people like that. Um, uh, you can message or you can call whenever you need. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for watching us. Uh, that was uh, really good to have you here. Seeing that you're watching on YouTube, that always makes my heart uh, warm because um, this is the channel that I'm starting. And you know, my goal get to a thousand subscribers, and we're on around 780. So by the end of the year, there will be a thousand. And uh, and on Facebook, where we got um, over two and a half thousand likes on the fan page, these things are growing and it's like property. It's, uh, it's starting small and it's grown and grown and grow. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, great webinar. Thanks again. So we have to do something again. It, it, you know, it, it, we, I think it's we can talk forever with Gary about this. Thank you very much for everyone that is watching because without you, this channel wouldn't be on and I wouldn't be sitting here and talking to people like that. And I hope you had some um you know you had a great evening okay uh yes they want more gary i'm sorry but they want more <laughs> okay okay you got a deal yeah <laughs> if you don't ask you won't get as they say in legacy no that's it yeah <laughs> gary thank you very much and good night guys uh thank bye, you everyone. bye 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 bye, -bye.